Hi, and welcome back to Batty.com. My name is Brian Thompson, and today I'm going to show you how to change the light bulbs in this 1990 through 1996 Corvette instrument panel. Tools that we'll need will be a standard set of pliers, a Torx 15 screwdriver or bit, and a small flat blade screwdriver. The parts that we'll need are the 1990 through 1996 gauge bulb kit available from batty.com. I'll leave a link in the description. When we turn the cluster over, the first thing we notice is that the rear panel is locking in the bulbs. We'll need to remove the rear panel, and to do that, we'll need to remove the eight torque screws holding that. These are T15 torque screws located here, 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 and here. We'll take those screws and set them someplace safe so we can find them later. Next, we'll gently lift the rear cover away from the circuit board. And we'll set that aside. The black circles that we see are the bulbs that we're replacing. We'll rotate those approximately a sixteenth of a turn counterclockwise and lift them away from the board. We'll go ahead and do that for all. We'll set those bulbs aside so that they don't get mixed up with the new bulbs. The reason we're reshooting this video today is that the factory bulb, which is made by GE, it was also distributed by Warner, uh, is no longer available and we had to find a replacement. One of the things that we tried were the cheap Chinese bulbs available on eBay. What we noticed is that when you install them, they lock in at a different angle. And because of that, the rear cover can't really be used. The rear cover is critical to keeping water off of the circuit board if there happens to be a water leak at the windshield. And so we really want to be able to reuse the rear cover. Here at Batty.com, we've worked with a prominent light bulb manufacturer to supply the factory brightness light bulb in a base that will lock in at the proper angle. When we reinstall the rear cover, we see the bulbs are locked in at an appropriate angle to allow it to be used. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the rest of these light bulbs. Every once in a while when we reinstall the rear cover, we see that one of the bulbs, we see that one or more bulbs have uh, rotated slightly too far. So we're just going to rotate that slightly counterclockwise. It's still secure in the PC board. And that lets the dust cover fit into place. I'll use my small flat blade screwdriver to guide the plastic tabs into the slots in the circuit board. Next we'll reinstall the eight screws which hold the rear cover in place. We're going to tighten those down snug so that they don't fall out and not so hard that we strip the plastic housing of the cluster. I've adjusted the lighting so that we can see so that we can see the results of our work here. Before you permanently reinstall the instrument panel in the car, it's always a good idea to test your work. Set the instrument panel in the car, turn on the key and test the various functions. The telltale lights are the lights around the edge of the screen and those should light up during the lamp test. Turn on the left and the right turn signals and make sure those work. Turn on the high beams and make sure those make sure that indicator is working. We're also looking to make sure that the face of the LCD screen is evenly illuminated as well as the face of each of the gauges. In this case everything looks great and our repair has been a success. Again, you can find the parts we used for this repair, as well as written instructions, at batty.com. 
That's B-A-T-E-E dot com. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you for watching.